Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Russ Kinsler. Russ is a fisheries biologist stationed in Riverdale, also works extensively in the salmon program that Game and Fish is involved with. Russ, this is the time of year now we start to see more salmon fishermen running down the riggers like these folks out here, right? Yes, yep, yeah. Generally, as the lake warms up, the, the salmon get a little more concentrated, and that happens the, the end of July, beginning of August, and that's when the, the salmon fishing, fishermen really start using their downriggers to, to target salmon. Um, let's give viewers a little bit of background on the salmon program here in North Dakota, why we started it, and when. Okay, the salmon program started in 1970. Um, it was started because Lake Skokwe is a, a very big lake. Um, it's, it's deep and has cold water, and the cold water was basically unutilized by other fish species for the most part. So they put salmon in to take advantage of that cold water and provide another sport fishery for the anglers. All right, we uh, harvest the eggs and things right here in North Dakota? Yep, yep, we collect all our own eggs uh, uh, out of Lake Skokwea and the, the Missouri River below the dam. Um, the eggs are harvested and then at the hatchery and then hatched and raised right at the hatchery and then restocked into the lake here. Right. for the anglers to catch. So. Now you don't stock the same number of salmon every year. You kind of have to do a balancing program, if we want to call it that, between the salmon and the forage. Yep, yep. We look at our, our smelt population and use that to determine how many salmon we're going to stock uh, the next year. Um, it, it's not an exact science, but yeah, it's based on how many smelt are in the lake. Is to, We look at that to determine the, the stocking of salmon. Some years, like last year, we we wanted to stock more salmon this year. We weren't able to collect as many eggs as we wanted to, so we, we ended up stocking less salmon, but we think we'll be fine. So, How do you determine how many smelt are in the lake? Uh, the smelt we use what we call hydroacoustics. It's basically a fancy depth finder that, that <laughs> counts the uh, smelt. We drive back and forth across the lake during the new moon phase uh, in August, and uh, it, it counts the smelt and gives us a number. Let's talk a little bit about the salmon themselves. Uh, actually everywhere, their life cycles and things like that. They don't live forever. No, no. Uh, salmon only live a few years. Um, for instance, here in the state, we hatch them out. Uh, they hatch out in the winter and they're raised till the spring and then they'll get stocked in Lake Skokwea in the spring. And the salmon return basically as one, two, and three-year-olds in Lake Skokwea. Uh, in their wild, they will, they will live longer. They'll live four or five, maybe six years. Um, but here in Lake Skokwea, we, we rarely see anything over three years. Um, we have seen them four and five year olds, but the bulk of our salmon that we're using to spawn are two and three year old females and one, two and three year old males. Russ, you mentioned before that these are deep water fish and the water out here where we're at in Government Bay, 130, 140, 50 feet deep, uh, it calls for some uh, kind of specialized equipment to fish for these. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're not gonna use them or catch them very easily using just regular walleye gear. Uh, the anglers out here are using downriggers uh, with uh, heavy walls to, to get their lures down deeper than that. I mean, they'll fish anywhere from 40 feet down all the way to 100, 120 foot down with their gear. Lake Sakaka, we are right now, Russ, is, it's no secret that the walleye, the northern, uh, pretty much every species in the lake is doing really well. What about the salmon? Uh, the salmon, we are hoping, are doing really well, too. Um, all these species are dependent on the main forage in the lake, which is rainbow smelt. And when the smelt numbers are, are, are high, then the walleyes do good, the northerns do good, and the salmon are, are doing well too. So last year we had some really nice sized salmon return, which is an indication of what the future should hold. So we're hoping this year to have some really nice sized salmon returning and, and, and good numbers for the anglers. We're toward the end of July, first part of August, so people have been fishing for salmon uh, for quite a while now, at least a couple of weeks. How have they been doing? Yeah, I, I've heard of some reports of some anglers getting some uh, smaller four to five pound fish. And now this weekend, it, it seems like there's some bigger 11, 12 pound stuff that are showing up. Okay, I know a couple of years ago, and not every year is a good year for salmon fishing in North Dakota. Um, a couple of years ago, they were catching a lot, not a lot, but the fish were bigger. Now, a couple of years after that, they were smaller fish, but they were catching a lot of them. What's the difference? Uh, well, a lot of that is the forage. Um, it, if you have the, the good amount of forage at the right, you know, when we're stocking the salmon and then young salmon get eating on that smelt and are able to grow and follow the smelt, we can have some really nice sized salmon in, in two, three years. If the forage is not so well, I mean, then, then you end up with a smaller salmon and 
numbers wise, I mean, that's, you know, if you have a lot of forage, then usually you have good numbers of salmon. If it's not so good forage, then not so, not so many salmon out there. Right, salmon fishing, uh, like we mentioned earlier, takes downriggers and things like that, but not necessarily. People do a lot of shore fishing for them, and that's a really fun sport too. Yeah, yep. Uh, towards the end of September, uh, the salmon start their, their spawning run, and they will move shallow into, you know, right up next to shore. And then you can catch them using crankbaits or spoons or just night crawlers on a, on a hook and a bobber right offshore. So, yep. How long does that spawning run generally last? The spawning run lasts to the beginning of November. Um, as far as shore fishing, usually from the middle of September till about the middle of October is the best. Once you get towards the end of the spawning run, the, the salmon really aren't inter interested in eating anymore. And they, I mean, you can see them next to shore, but they're tough to catch. Let's talk about the salmon tagging program that you folks started a couple of years ago to better monitor the uh, salmon and, and better manage the resource. How can the average salmon fisherman be a part of this project? Yeah, we, we tag a certain percentage of the salmon every year, and, it, and that varies from year to year. Uh, the anglers can tell if they catch a tag salmon if the adipose fin, which is the soft fleshy lobe fin at the, the, towards the tail end of the fish, okay. if that fin is cut off, then there's a good chance that the salmon has a tag in its head. It's not a guarantee. Some fish lose their tags, but if the angler can turn in their head to us, then we can, we can check it to see if it's got a tag. And if it has a tag, we can use that information. That'll help us determine how the stocking worked, you know, whether we were checking for different sizes or different locations of stocking. It'll, it'll help us to manage the fishery better. So. All right, where do they turn the heads in? Uh, they can turn the heads into the Game and Fish office in Riverdale or Bismarck or any, any Game and Fish office or the honey hole in the gas station in Riverdale and Scott's Bait and Tackle in Pick City will also accept heads. All right, thanks Russ. Thank you. If you're interested in applying for the 2016 Pronghorn Lottery, remember the deadline to apply is Wednesday, August 3rd. There are a total of 730 Pronghorn licenses available in the lottery this year in seven open units. All licenses are valid for any pronghorn. The archery only season runs from noon on September 2nd to Sunday, September 25th, and the regular firearm season runs from noon September 30th until October 16th. Hunters who still have a valid license can use legal firearms or bow equipment, and they must stay in their assigned unit. You can apply for the 2016 lottery at the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. You can fill out a paper application, you can print one off the Game and Fish website, or you can pick one up from a license vendor, or you can apply over the phone. The number is 800-406-6409. For Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.